Hello, science students. Now that we've learned a little bit about chemical reactions, what the reactants are, what the products are, how to read a chemical reaction equation, now we're gonna start talking about counting the atoms in chemical reactions to prepare ourselves for balancing chemical reactions. The goal today is for you to be able to tell or determine if a chemical reaction is balanced. We'll talk about what it means for a chemical reaction to be balanced very quickly. So we've already learned about within physics a little bit, and you've probably heard this rule before, there's a law of conservation of mass or law of conservation of matter. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. What that means for our chemical reaction equation is that in chemistry, this means that all the atoms present in the reactants of a chemical reaction must also be present in the products. So every atom of every element that we have in the reactants must also be there in the products. We cannot create or destroy those. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. The, the first example we have is kind of our reaction that we've been dealing the most with the most. It's our decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. So now there's a couple new features. So we already know about the element uh, symbols and the subscripts tell us how many uh, atoms of that element are in that compound or molecule. And then now we have these coefficients. The coefficients go in front and they tell us how many of those molecules are involved in each run of that reaction or each time that reaction happens. So the two in front of hydrogen peroxide means that there are two hydrogen peroxide molecules at the start of the reaction. And then it's claiming that we should wind up with two water molecules, two H2O. And if there's no coefficient, that just means it's a one, there's one oxygen there. If, if it meant zero, this is a common misunderstanding that if there isn't one there, it's a zero, then we wouldn't write it at all. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to write every single molecule out for every single chemical reaction and then put the blank in front of it to show that it was not present and that would be a little bit impractical. Okay, so what do we need to be able to do? We need to be able to count the atoms in chemical reactions. So here's, here's the general strategy I like to use is I make a little T-chart. Okay, and the T goes where the reaction arrow is to show us that we're gonna count the atoms of the elements before the reaction and the atoms of the elements after the reaction. First thing I do is I go and write down all the elements we know. We've got a hydrogen, we've got an oxygen. Okay, same thing on the other side, that's good. If there are elements present before or after the reaction that aren't there, so let's say I had a reactant, let's say I had carbon over here but no carbon in the products, then I would know that I've got a little bit of a problem. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do, there are two hydrogen atoms and hydrogen peroxide, but I have two peroxide molecules, which means I must multiply those together. Two times two will give me four hydrogens. Okay, it's gonna be the same for the oxygen. There are two oxygen atoms in hydrogen peroxide, but I have two hydrogen peroxide atoms, therefore I have four oxygen atoms. After the reaction, I have two water molecules. Since each water molecule has two hydrogens, two times two will give us four. A little bit more challenging. So we have two oxygen, we have one oxygen atom in each water. We have two waters. That means we have two oxygen atoms plus another two from my oxygen atom over here. If you need to, you can always show work in here. Two plus two more is four. So this is good news. This one is what we would call balanced. And that is because we have the same number of each atom of each, ele of each type of element before in the reactants as we do in the products at the end of the reaction, which means this one is balanced properly. Let's look at one more example. 2CH4 or 2-methane plus 4 oxygen goes to 2 carbon dioxide plus 3 H2O. Okay, already you should be a little bit concerned because you're seeing some odd and even numbers at the same time. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's always something to be a little bit curious about. You'll notice they each have a coefficient this time. There are no coefficients of 1. Let's go ahead and make our little t-chart. This one's a little bit more complicated. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. Okay, same over here. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And even though those don't appear in the same order in my products as they do in the reactants, I leave them in the same order so that it's easy to compare. So our first mission, how many carbons are there? I've got two methanes. There are no other carbons involved in the reactants over here. So two times just one carbon per methane means I have two carbons. Hydrogens, there's four hydrogens in each methane. I have two methanes, so I have two hy uh, eight hydrogen atoms in the reactants. There's no oxygen in methane, which is nice, so I have four times two. Every oxygen gas molecule has two oxygens. Multiply by four and we get eight. That takes care of my reactants. 
let's look at the products. So two carbon dioxide. Uh, oxygen, I'm thankful it comes last because notice it's in both. The other ones are separate. So two times my carbon. One carbon means I've got two carbons. So far, it checks out, right? Okay, two times two is four oxygens. We're just going to put that down there for now and know that we're going to have to add a little bit extra. Okay, we're going to take a look at our hydrogens. We have three water molecules. Three times two is six. Okay, already we're concerned because that does not match up. Okay, and then three times just one oxygen for every water means I have three here. That adds up to seven. So we have a little bit of a problem. If we look carefully, we can see that both the hydrogens and the oxygens do not match up. Okay, so that means we somehow lost hydrogens, we somehow lost oxygens. That means that this reaction is not balanced properly. We're gonna learn how to balance them on our own, uh, hopefully in the very next lesson. So this one is not balanced. So uh, your job today is to try to identify reactions that are balanced and not balanced by counting up the atoms of the different elements and making sure that we do not create or destroy any matter in those reactions. Otherwise, they're not balanced and we'd have to go look at balancing those again. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day.